Good Yuntif, everyone. If everybody could please take their seats. Good Yuntif. We're so glad that you're here with us for Kol Nidre. Thank you for braving the imperfect weather to share the holiday with us. And welcome to those online who are sharing the holiday with us as well. We feel your spirit and thank you for your flexibility. I know that coming inside made it harder for some and we hope that you're joining us online. Again, just as a reminder, we have a section for those who want to be in the mask section. We want to be inclusive of everybody so that they feel comfortable here at services. I would like to thank our professional quartet, our accompanist, Chris Cregan, our cellist, Dan Holtmark, and our interpreters as well. Thank you for helping make this a special holiday for all. Tomorrow, we have a full day of services. We hope that you will attend our taught services at 9 a.m., followed by our main service at 10 a.m. We will have a text study led by Jason Morris. Thank you, Jason, for your inspirational words and insight. And followed by our afternoon service where our teens will help tell the Jonah story. And then our family service is at 3 o'clock, followed at 4 o'clock by Yisker. And then our closing Ne'ila service is 5 o'clock, and then we will have a break the fast together. So for those who want to spend the whole day with us, we are actively um, engaging you. I also want to introduce myself. If you, we haven't had a chance to meet, I'm Rabbi Jesse Gallup, and this is Cantor Rita Glassman. We um, are honored to be your clergy and to celebrate and share these high holy days with you. We will begin on page nine. I'd like to invite up Diane and Brian Heaps for lighting the holiday candles. The human spirit is the lamp of God searching out what lies within us. Guided by the flame of conscience, on this sacred night, we search for truth. Shine your light upon us as we strive to serve you. May we find safety in your faithful love. We light the flame of healing and forgiveness. On this atonement night, we give thanks for love. We, can, we continue on the bottom of page 15. Kol Nidre, a chant that begins in a whisper and rises to a cry. On this night of promises remembered, 
Each soul in solitude communes with the soul of the universe. God, from this day of atonement to the next, may we reach it in peace. All Israel makes these vows to turn from wrong, dishonesty, and greed, to walk in the path of justice and right. Yet we know our weakness, how prone we are to fail. Help us to keep our word. Help us to act with humility and integrity. We seek pardon and forgiveness. We seek your radiance and light.
I would like to invite up past presidents of the congregation and current president of the congregation. <coughs> we rise as a congregation as we turn to page 16.
commitments, vows of abstinence, and terms of obligation, sworn promises and oaths of dedication that we promise and swear to God and take upon ourselves from this day of atonement until next day of atonement. May it bind us well. We regret them and for all of them we repent. Let all of them be discarded and forgiven, abolished and undone. They are not valid and they are not binding. Our vows shall not be vows, our resolves shall not be resolves, and our oaths, they shall not be oaths. Page 20. All shall be forgiven, the entire community of Israel, and the stranger who lives in their midst, for all have gone astray in error. Moses prayed to God, as you have been faithful to this people ever since Egypt, please forgive their failings now, in keeping with your boundless love, and God responded, I forgive as you have asked. We ask everyone to remain standing as we return the Torahs to the Ark, and then we will continue with the Baruch on page 22.
page 24, together in the English. Blessed are you, Adonai. Your great name fills the universe with majestic might. Your word creates twilight and dusk as your wisdom opens the gates of night. Your discernment separates the changing seasons and causes the passage of time. The stars arrayed across the sky reveal your design. You rule out the cycle of darkness and light, shaping day and night. You sweep away day and carry the world into nightfall, setting a day apart from nighttime. You are God of all we can perceive and all that is beyond our perception. Living, eternal God, be our sovereign to the end of time. Baruch atah Adonai, hama'ariv aravim. Blessed are you, Adonai, creator of twilight and dusk. Page 26. Love beyond all space and time. Your love enfolds your people, Yisrael. We receive it in your teaching. Your gift of Torah, sacred obligations, discipline and law. So let us speak these teachings when we lie down and rise up and find joy forever in your Torah and mitzvot. They are the very essence of our life, ours to ponder and study all our days. May we never lose or be unworthy of your love. Baruch atadonai, ohev amo Yisrael, for you are blessed, the one who loves your people Israel. Page 28, the Shema. Please be seated as we continue with Vahafta on page 30. <laughs> to this heroic might, the people thanked and praised God by name, freely accepting the reign of heaven. Then Moses and Miriam and all Israel sang to you this song of utter joy. <laughs> Page 
page 43. Together, in the middle of the page, when despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night and leave sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in the beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives without forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still waters and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light for a time. I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Page 42. We continue on page 45. For on this day, atonement shall be made for you to purify you from all your wrongs, and pure you shall be in the presence of Adonai. <laughs> Together on page 46. 
Have mercy upon me, O God, as befits your faithfulness. In keeping with your abundant compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly of my iniquity and purify me of my sin. For I recognize my transgressions and am ever conscious of my sin. Please rise if you're able. We continue together in English on page 50. Your life-giving power is forever, Adonai. With us in life and in death, you liberate and save, cause dew to descend, and with mercy abundant, lovingly nurture all life. From life to death, you are the force that flows without end. You support the falling, heal the sick, 
free the imprisoned and confined. You are faithful even to those who rest in the dust. Power beyond power, for whom salvation springs, sovereign over life and death, who is like you? Merciful God, who compares with you? With tender compassion, you remember all creatures for life. Faithful and true, worthy of our trust, you sustain our mortal yearnings. In you we place our undying hopes. Baruch atah Adonai, Michaye hakol, wellspring of blessing, power eternal. You are the one who gives and renews all life. Please be seated. Page 53. And so in your holiness, give all creation the gift of awe. Turn our fear to reverence. Let us be witness of wonder, witnesses of wonder, perceiving all nature as a prayer come alive. We bow to the sovereignty of your strength, the primacy of your power. We yearn for connection with all that lives, doing your will with wholeness of heart. Awe-inspiring in your is your creation, all-encompassing your transcendent name. The middle of page 58. You are holy, your name is awe. There is nothing divine beyond you. As a prophet Isaiah taught, the source of all might is exalted through justice. The God of holiness made holy through righteousness. Baruch Tadonai, HaMelech HaKadosh. Blessed are you, Adonai, Holy Sovereign. Page 62. In your love, eternal our God, you have given us this day of Yom Kippur, a day on which our wrongs are forgiven with love a day of sacred assembly, a day to be mindful of our peoples going out from Egypt, together at the bottom of the page. Our God and God of the generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you. May it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awareness, together with the memory of our ancestors, the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, and the memory of your people, the family of Israel. May we be remembered for safety, well-being, and favor, for love and compassion, for life and for peace on this day of atonement. Page 64. Zochreinu Adonai Eloheinu bo litova, amen. Ufokdenu vo livracha, amen. Vehoshienu vo lechaim, amen. Eternal our God, remember us. Amen. Be mindful of us. Amen. And redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Amen. The bottom of page 70. Page 70. You are blessed, Adonai, sovereign who forgives our failings and pardons the failings of your people, the house of Israel. You banish our guilt from year to year. You reign in majesty over all the earth. You sanctify the people of Israel and the Day of Atonement. Page 74. Together, God, who is ours, God of all generations, to you we are grateful forever. Rock and protector of our lives, your saving power endures from age to age. We thank you and tell the tale of your praise your power in our lives, your caring for our souls, the constant miracle of your kindness, morning, noon, and night. We call you goodness, for your compassion never ends. We call you mercy, for your love has no limit. We call you hope, now and for all time. Page 76. We continue together. And for all these gifts, God of majesty, May your name come to be blessed and praised. Our gratitude, a daily offering until the end of time. Inscribe your covenant partners for a life of goodness. And may all life resound with gratitude and faith in praise of your name. God, you free us and strengthen us. Baruch atadonai, hatov shimcha ulacha na'el lehodot. Blessed are you, Adonai whose goodness deserves thanks and praise. We continue silently through page 81.
We continue on page 82. For us, our vidui, our confession, is a time when we as individuals own our wrongdoing while also accepting that though we may not have control of the situation, that there's wrongdoing in our society and as a community, we are responsible. We will be rising in a moment. And when we sing the words of Ashamnu, we symbolically pound our heart, acknowledging each and every sin. The Hebrew is beautiful. It's an acrostic that because it's not our native language, we don't always see that beauty, but it's poetic and powerful. So think about it not as e each act that you've done yourself, but we know that we sometimes let things happen in our society that we wish was different. And tonight we hold ourselves accountable for these actions along with the actions we have chosen to live in our own lives. Please rise. Our God and God of all generations, may our prayers reach your presence. And when we turn to you, do not be indifferent. Adonai, we are arrogant and stubborn, claiming to be blameless and free of sin. In truth, we have stumbled and strayed. We have done wrong. Together in English, of these wrongs we are guilty. We betray, we steal, we scorn, we act perversely. We are cruel, we scheme, we are violent, we slander, we devise evil, we lie, we ridicule, we disobey, we abuse, we defy, we corrupt, we commit crimes, we are hostile, we are stubborn, we are immoral, we kill. 
We spoil, we go astray, we lead others astray. Page 86. The words we are about to say are al al chetanu lefanecha, which is the ways that we have wronged you. We will continue together in English. The ways we have wronged you, deliberately and by mistake, and harm we have caused in your world through the words of our mouths. The ways we have wronged you by hardening our hearts and harm we have caused in your world through careless speech. The ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit and harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor. The ways we have wronged you by judging others unfairly and harm we have caused in your world through disrespect to parents and teachers. The ways we have wronged you through insincere apologies and harm we have caused in your world by mistreating a friend or neighbor. The ways we have wronged you through violence and abuse and harm we have caused in your world through dishonesty and business. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. The ways, together, the ways we have wronged you openly and secretly, and harm we have caused in your world by losing self-control. The ways we have wronged you through sexual immorality, and harm we have caused in your world through consumption of food and drink. The ways we have wronged you by giving into hostile impulses, and harm we have caused in your world through greed and exploitation. The ways we have wronged you through cynicism and scorn, and harm we have caused in your world through arrogant behavior. The ways we have wronged you by hating without cause, and harm we have caused in your world through offensive speech. The ways we have wronged you with slanderous tongue, and harm we have caused in your world through a selfish or petty spirit. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. Together, will you hear my voice, you who are far from me? Will you hear my voice wherever you are, a voice calling aloud, a voice silently weeping, endlessly demanding a blessing? This busy world is vast. 
Its ways are many. Paths meet for a moment, then part forever. We go on searching, but our feet stumble. We cannot find that which we have lost. Perhaps my last day is already drawing near. Drawing close are the tears of parting. I will wait for you till my days flicker out, like Rachel waiting for her to beloved. Page 114, we continue with Avinu. We continue on the top of page 98 with Shema Kolenu. You may be seated.
We continue on page 114 with Avinu Malkinu. Please rise. Together and in Avinu Malkinu, Almighty and Merciful, hear our voice. Avinu Malkinu, we have strayed and sinned before you. Avinu Malkinu, have compassion on us and on our families. Avinu Malkinu, halt the onslaught of sickness, violence, and hunger. Avinu Malkinu, halt the reign of those who cause pain and Avinu Malkinu, enter our names in the book of life well lived. Avinu Malkinu, renew for us a year of goodness. Avinu Malkinu, let our hands overflow with your blessings. Avinu Malkinu, let your eyes behold the dawn of redemption. Avinu Malkinu, we pray, do not turn us away from you with nothing. Avinu Malkinu, welcome our prayer with love. Accept and embrace it. Avinu Malkinu, act towards us as befits your name. Avinu Malkinu, act for your sake, if not for ours. Avinu Malkinu, you alone are our sovereign. Avinu Malkinu, let the gates of heaven be open to our prayer. Avinu Malkinu, hear our voice, teach us with tender compassion. Avinu Malkinu, almighty and merciful, answer us with grace, for our deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love. There is a story about a painter whose latest work was being unveiled before a gathering of art critics. They were scrutinizing the painting when one critic noticed what she felt was a glaring oversight by the artist. The critic, the critic called out, Sir, I see that the door to the house in the painting has no handle. Was that deliberate? The painter responded, the house represents the human heart, and there is no handle because it can only be opened from within. This story helps us to remember that each of us has the power to open our own hearts. To trust and let people in is one of the hardest and yet holiest tasks we perform. By allowing another human to get close to us, we become vulnerable. And when we are hurt 
It shakes our foundation to even our spirituality. Thus, once this confidence is broken, it is very hard to trust again. On Yom Kippur, we are commanded to forgive, for this is our day of atonement. As the Mishnah teaches, for transgressions between one person and another, the day of atonement atones only if the first one appeases the other. When we hurt another, we are obligated to help heal and rectify the damage we have caused in the life of the person we have offended. We are commanded to ask for forgiveness from those who we have sinned against. But what is our role as the one who forgives? We might think that we are allowed to be passive, waiting for the sinner to come to us. But our great sage, Moses Maimonides, the Rambam, teaches, when one, when one person sins against another, he should not hide the matter and remain silent. Rather, it is a mitzvah for him to bring the matter into the open and say, why did you do such and such to me? And if the person who sinned returns and asks him for forgiveness, then he should forgive, for the forgiver should not be cruel. It might seem foreign or uncomfortable to us that we are required to exonerate and pardon. Many may feel saying sorry does not equal the pain I went through. Only when that person shows me that he, she, or they can empathize and understand how deeply I was hurt, only then will I forgive. We create a litmus test to determine if someone is authentic enough for us to let go of our grievance. We must, remember our, we must remind ourselves that we will never know to what depth one is grieved by his, her, or their shortcomings and wrongdoings. You will never know the true extent of an apology. Yet, when we, are, when we humble ourselves and give each other the benefit of doubt, it allows us to keep our hearts open. We hope that the perpetrator has gone through true anguish and repentance in regards to the wrongdoing. But as mere humans, we must be humble enough to accept that we are only mortals who lack eternal perspective. We are not God. Just as we struggle to learn from our mistakes, we desire that others go on the same voyage. For if we live in sacred relationships, then all of us are struggling together, searching, learning, and growing to understand how and why we hurt others, especially those we love. For this is what brings meaning to life, fixing our broken relationships. Rashi reminds us that we have limitations and that many times when we get hurt by others, we forget all the positive things they have done for us. Rashi explains, even though they threw your firstborn into the Nile, nonetheless, you must not hate the Egyptians. We are not allowed to bear a grudge towards the Egyptians, for when our ancestors were in need, when famine hit the land of Canaan, and Jacob and his sons sought refuge and sustenance, the Egyptians saved them from starvation and death. They extended their hospitality for many generations. Due to the care, warmth, and friendship of Egypt, our people survived. It was only the last generation, with a pharaoh who did not know Jacob, that wanted to bring pain and terror to our people. Rosh reminds us that we forget so easily the good the sinner has done in the past. In our obligation to forgive, we must be aware of our own psychological and spiritual needs. Because if we are not true to ourselves, then we will say that we absolve what has transpired, but our hearts and souls will continue to stoke the fire of rage and hurt that, that is within us. So many of us struggle with the concept of forgiveness because it contradicts our logical sensibilities. 
it seems more rational not to trust someone who hurts us rather than letting the perpetrator back into our lives. Common sense may be that we are to learn from the past hurt and carry those understandings into future friendships and relationships. However, we know that this way of living will never bring us happiness or contentment in life. Theologian Martin Buber has great insight on the matter. He states, a person chooses death by not forgiving. Forgiveness is the great yes. Acting in accordance with the highest ideals of our tradition, I do not have a choice whether or not I should forgive you. I only have a choice whether or not I will. And I must if I want to be alive. Therefore, our first step towards forgiveness is accepting that we need for selfish reasons to forgive others. After we accept the need for forgiveness, it is important to internalize that our hearts require healing and that by forgiving others, no matter how hard it is, bring health, brings health to our own lives. Our heart is like our bones. A mended limb may be stronger than one that was never broken. Sometimes through pain, we learn how much we truly love, and this causes us to heal. This is our second step, for Rabbi Harold Kushner tells a story that enlightens us on the power of forgiveness. He said, I knew a woman who had been mistreated by her husband and who, 10 years after her divorce, still could not surrender her rage. I counseled. For 10 years, you have been walking around with a hot poker in your hand, ready to throw it at your ex-husband. But you've never had the chance. All you've done is burn your hand. I'm sure that we can all relate to holding hostilities in our hearts. It blocks us away from connecting with others and impacts how we interact with the world. Therefore, it is sometimes worth forgiving, not for the sake of the ones who hurt us, but for our own. Not letting go of our rage is likely to have, enough, have the effect of prolonging, not shortening, not shortening our suffering. How much pain do you need to self-induce before you forgive? This third step in our process of healing is realizing that the sinner or transgressor is only human. Forgiveness is the act of admitting humility, acknowledging that each of us is just like all other people, and that all humanity, including me and you, makes mistakes. Rabbi Harlan Weschler helps us to understand this. He teaches, keep in mind that we, were, we will never be able to live with another if we expect perfection. We will never be worthy of each other if we do not try to achieve a more perfect love, as perfect as can be. To do so, we must be engaged in a lifelong effort to achieve reconciliation. Through all the steps of repentance and into that place, which is the holy of holies to us, the heart of someone whom we love. When we see each other's hearts, even those that hurt us, we are thus able to see each human's holiness, including our own. To love someone is a holy act. There are some actions that are unforgivable, but the more I learn about the pain people cause, it is that it is, that it is usually the result of the hurt they themselves experience. Let us break these unhealthy cycles. It does, not let, it does not condone the action. Rather, we strive to acknowledge their struggle. This can lead us to be more humane within ourselves. The fourth and final step of internalizing forgiveness is realizing that our acts help bring about tikkun olam. By forgiving, you are helping repair the world. The famous Holocaust survivor, Rabbi Leo Beck reflects. Let there be peace for all those of ill will and an end to all vengeance and all talk of penalty and punishment. And that we, 
when all this is over, may live again as human, as humans among humans. And that there will be peace again on this poor earth, upon persons of goodwill, and that peace may also come upon the others. By healing the world and focusing on God's partnership with humanity, we are reminded about what is truly important in life. On Yom Kippur, we emulate God, who finishes the day sitting on the throne of forgiveness. We are reminded of the words of Ni'ila, the closing service tomorrow. Forgive your neighbors the wrong they have done you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If I nurse anger against another, can I ask pardon of the Eternal One? Showing no pity for one like myself, can I then plead for my own sins? If I, a creature of flesh, nourish resentment, who will forgive me my sins? By forgiving, we inspire Menschlichkeit into the world, where we are ethical and do the right thing. As Pirkei Avot teaches, when there are no Menches in the world, you be a Mensch. We shall role model ethical living and goodwill. May this Day of Atonement remind us that through our love for Adonai, we are challenged to love all of God's creations, even the ones that hurt us dearly. May this day of reflection help us to understand the meaning of life. I would like to close with the words of Rabbi Charles Klein. Holidays and holy days are mountains in time. They are moments when some are able to acquire a deeper understanding of life and what life requires of us. As we climb above the clamor and pettiness of daily life, we reach a vantage point from which life is viewed differently. We can see how many irreplaceable hours are spent nur nursing grievances. Perched upon these mountains, we often become wiser. Insults, disappointments, and hurts we've suffered appear smaller. These sacred times are the substance of life. From the top of these mountains, we see more clearly that life is too short to be unforgiving. May each of us internalize and accept that Yom Kippur is a day of struggle, not just to recognize our shortcomings and make change to Shuva, but that in this process, we should accept the faults in others as well. Let us support and nurture each other so that we can be partners in seeking holiness in our lives, especially through the acts of forgiveness. Can he ratzon? May this be God's will.
continue on page 116 as we arise for the Alenu. <laughs> page 119 at the bottom of the page together may we gain wisdom in our lives overflowing like a river with understanding loved each of us for the peace we bring to others may our deeds exceed our speech and may we never live at our hand but to conquer fear and doubt and despair. Rise up like the sun, O God, over all humanity. Cause light to go forth over all lands between the seas. And light up the universe with the joy of wholeness, of freedom, and of peace. Thus it has been said, Adonai will be sovereign over all the earth. On that day, Adonai will be one, and God's name will be one. up like the sun, O oh God, over all humanity. Cause light to go forth over all the lands between the seas. And light up the universe with the joy of all to invite up Brian Heaps, president of the congregation. Good evening. Tonight, we chanted the poignant and powerful Kol Nidre. It is intended to absolve us of all vows we have made under duress that we have been unable to keep. It does not absolve us of promises we have failed to keep for other reasons. Tomorrow, we will pray and ask for forgiveness for our broken promises and misdeeds. In the spirit of Yom Kippur, we are also asked to offer forgiveness to others for wrongs they have done. I am grateful that Rabbi Jesse, Cantor Glassman, 
and our musicians here tonight have helped us to reflect on the meaning of this day and that their words and melodies may impel us to create more peace and understanding in this troubled world. Our services will continue all day tomorrow, beginning at 9 a.m. with our TOT service and 10 a.m. for our traditional morning service. Please see the back of your ticket or the temple's website for times of other services throughout the day. If you're unable to join us in person, please know that our services throughout the day will be available live streamed. You can, vi <coughs> excuse me. you can find the link for live streaming through the temple website, tinner.org, or on Facebook. Whether online or in person, please join us. Remember, you don't need to be physically here to be part of us. On behalf of our clergy, our staff, our board of trustees, my wife Diane and myself, may this new year be a good year for us all. May it be filled with peace, love, health, hope, and fulfillment. Gamar Hatima Tova, may you be inscribed and sealed for good in the Book of Life. Tsom Ka'il U Mashmi'i, may you have an easy and meaningful fast. Thank you. Tada Rabba. Page 121. This holy night concludes with memory. Our last thoughts always are those we have lost. We miss them especially tonight, yearning for their presence at our side. The servers we have shared once with theirs, they spoke and sang the ancient words. They prayed, repented, and yearned for better lives as we have done. Flawed in their deeds, imperfect in their faith, they still drew strength from their tradition as we seek fortitude in ours. What was good and beautiful in their lives once gave us joy and now inspires us to reach higher. The knowledge that they loved us deeply brings comfort to our hearts. So we light candles of remembrance and gratitude, and we speak the timeless truth, Zikronam Libracha. Their memory is a blessing now and forever. We pray that their goodness will live on in our lives, planting seeds of kindness and hope for generations to come. Page 122. As a congregation, we think of Dorothy Ann Blatt, mother of Deborah Blatt, who died this afternoon, but is not yet in period of Shloshin. So we acknowledge her loss and their loss, and we hope her memory is for blessing. We think about those who have passed on Yom Kippur's in years past. Howard Eltabet, Meta Brownstein Feldman, Emmanuel Goldsmith, Sheldon Greenberg, Edith Zuckman Guild, Walter A. Judelson, Daniel Klinghoffer, Sybil Lusbader, Samuel Ostrove, Jack Pressburg, Gertrude Wine. We think of them, all of our loved ones, those of our people who have no one to say Kaddish for them, and those who have blessed this world of all backgrounds, who have made this world a better place. Before we rise, I just want to remind you that the words are a little bit different during the high holidays of the Kaddish, in the middle of the page and at the bottom. Please rise for the mourner's Kaddish. Ikadal v'ikadash me rabah, b'alman divrach riyute b'al michma chute, b'chayichon yomechon of chayet kol beit Yisrael, ba'gala v'isman kari v'imru amen. Yehesh me rabba mevarach leolam ol me omaya. Yit barach vishtabach vipaar vitroman vinase. Vita dar vita le vita lal shme de kudisha brihu. Leela uleela mikol birchata vishirata. Tush bechata benechemata. Dami ram vialma vimru. Amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shemaya. Bechaim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. 
O se shalom bim romav, hu ya se shalom. Aleinu vel kol Yisrael, vel kol yoshvei tevel, vimru, amen. Please be seated. Our closing song for our service this evening is Adon Olam on page 126. benediction, I just want to take a moment and thank the so many people who made tonight possible. There's so many people, be it our sound and AV, our administrative team, and our maintenance team, who have worked tirelessly to transition from outside to inside. And often their work is invisible. And tonight, we thank them for the extra hours, the service of your heart, and the gifts that you give us. So thank you to, to the whole team for making tonight special. Page 127. Yihir ratzon milfanecha, Adonai Eloheinu velehevotenu v'imotenu, shed chadesh aleinu shena tova umetuka, our God and God of our ancestors, eternal God of all generations, may your presence in our lives this new year renew our spirits and renew our strength. May it be a good year, May it be a sweet year. As together we say, Gamar Chati Ma Tova. May each and every one of us be sealed in the book of life. As together we say, Amen. Amen. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Gamar Chati Ma Tova. Gamar Chati Ma Tova. Mm -hmm.